So good evening and welcome to the February 21st, 2024 Hanson Economic Development Committee meeting um, of the Town of Hanson Economic Development Committee. We'll call it to this meeting to order at 6.30, well actually 5.30 p.m. Um, I'd like to announce for all those in attendance, which I'm saying to empty chairs, um, that this meeting is being recorded for distribution on Whitman Hanson Community Access. Playback times and other related information on this recording can be found at whca.tv. All right, now that we've dispensed with the formalities, um, so because we are recording it um, uh, not visually, um, just audio, um, so we'll do a um, attendance. Um, so we've got um, Mr. Ernst, and um, we've got Mr. Cohen and Ms. Kemet. So um, we, um, before we dive into the minutes, I did want to mention that I have had several texts from um, the two uh, members who are missing tonight. Um, so I'm going to follow up with the town administrator um, and um, use those texts as their formal resignation in lieu of a formal resignation. Um, and I hope to have that perhaps even on uh, the Board of Selectmen agenda next Tuesday. Um, hope springs eternal, and we shall see if I am able to accomplish that. Um, okay, with that, um, the uh, I'll look to approve the minutes from the November 8th, 2023 um, EDC meeting. I'll make the motion to approve November 8th, 2023 meeting minutes. I'll second that. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. great. <clears throat> um, and then that brings us uh, very quickly to uh, the presentation of the pedestrian improvements conceptual design for Main Street from Elm Street to High Street. <clears throat> uh, okay. So, Tony DeFries, Town Planner. For the record, um, so we received a grant, as uh, the committee is aware, for pedestrian improvements along the Main Street corridor from High Street to Elm Street. Um, the contract has been executed. The company Verdantis has been doing the design work, and they've created a conceptual set of plans um, based off the survey work that they performed back in 2023, and they're showing a they have these set of plans beginning at Elm Street. Oops, sorry. Beginning Excuse at Elm. me, could we have a brief recess because I think we're about to intersect with a vacuum cleaner or somebody cleaning or something. Do you mind just popping to see who that is to just see if they can pump the brakes on doing this area for a little while? Thanks. Yeah, you might catch them down that way. I don't know where they are. It sounds like it's all over the place. I was trying to figure out if it was like a Somebody angry with the chainsaw. Okay, so we'll resume then. Okay. Um, so you're looking at a design, what they call like a 25% design, and so this is sh depicting sidewalks on both sides of the both sides of the street, um, along with some crosswalks and. Uh, wheelchair access ramps and then you'll see at the bottom of the, this plan here are cross sections and these cross sections are cross section of the road at every 250 feet uh, and it depicts you know where the where the sidewalk where the edge of the pavement is where the sidewalk the edge of the sidewalk would be the driveways all the existing features along that corridor. Uh, this has been presented to the planning board, and then the next step uh, will be presenting to the select board so they can take a look at it as well. Uh, the planning board is in favor of seeing uh, sidewalks on both sides uh, from uh, Elm to High. Uh, Verdanis has provided a cost estimate for the construction of these sidewalks and what it would be is an asphalt sidewalk with concrete curbing and that would work best for the town to maintain at a later date uh, once the sidewalks are constructed if for some reason the sidewalk became damaged the highway department could easily get in there and, and, and fix that uh, so um, we have you know 
few pages here that show okay. so that's starting at Elm and you're heading east towards the train station and then this is approaching the train station so the train station is here and this is the railroad track oh, I'm sorry the train station is here this is the railroad track mm -hmm. and the sidewalks continue uh, and then the next page is showing the sidewalks going in front of uh, the Marion Jello property, the former uh, Ocean Spray, the Egan project and also across the street uh, from the convenience store and so forth um, and it, it would terminate again at, at High Street the Egan project, the plans for that site have been sent up to Verdantis so that they could incorporate that into the design. Um, the next few pages are just details. Is it possible for us prospectively to require anybody that builds along that corridor? Uh, is, are you saying this is going to go all the way to Elm Street? Right, from Elm all the way to High. So that so the grant covers the design from those two streets along the Main Street corridor. Okay. Um, so if once, like if there's other projects in that were to come along that that strip of that corridor, yep. Um, you know, we could require under site plan approval through the ZBA that they incorporate sidewalks that meet the design here if we haven't constructed those sidewalks. That's that, where I was going with that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so we're also asked for Danis to take a look at uh, lighting on these sidewalks um, and sort of, you know, make this just a really attractive corridor um, to provide access. So the cost basically is about just over half a million dollars if you do one sidewalk and just over a million dollars if you do two. I really expected it to be larger than that, didn't you? Didn't yeah. you guys think it would be more than that? <clears throat> I think that's why um, in the planning board we were like, let's go with both. The yeah. so I'm, I'm in a state of shock. I was bracing myself. Okay. I thought you'd say at least $3 million. Like I, no, no. Wow, okay. So it, does that, that doesn't include the lighting though, right? Correct, that doesn't include okay. That's just the construction of the yep. sidewalk and the installation of the curbing. Uh, so this... Sidewalk is within the layout, so there's not, it's not uh, going outside the layout where we're looking for easements from um, any of the abutters or the residents along that. That's what I was going to ask you. So we don't, so um, did, we're not going to need to request any easements? With this design, no. Okay, is there an alternate design by which we would need easements? As we, as we head towards, let's say, the 75 and the 100%, you know, this may get adjusted based on our needs or what we may like or not like, and there may be a need for an easement here or there. Okay. But as of right now, there is no easement shown now, or taken. Even even by the Ocean Spray Building, which is an extremely narrow little area there. What they've done, what they've done is, in essence, the sidewalk is going to be five feet wide, and you may have some encroachment into the travel lane, so there would be some removal of pavement if you will okay all right to install okay. the sidewalk now even though that even though that road has been paved the work here that will be proposed is something that you could in essence cut you could saw cut along that road to, to make all this work without having to give smelling salts to the highway right um, okay right direct <laughs> yes <laughs> okay all right so um i've passed this along you know what i don't need to double check but i believe i passed these along to him as well to get his comments and again, the next step for me is to bring this before the select board so they could also take a look at it. And then we'll get it out there on the web page and, you know, to let folks know. So once we get through with all the design work here and the complete the grant here, then the next phase would be pursuing some type of grant funding for the actual construction. And, you know, scale of 1 to 10, what are, what's our shot at that? At getting the grant money? Yeah. Um, well, I think if we don't go the route of Milton, that even though it's competitive, I think Hanson has as good a shot as anyone else for 
getting monies to construct this sidewalk. Uh, I am pursuing through the 2025 one-stop program sidewalks from High Street to Route 58. Right, right. Where we had a set of we have plans yep. that were done in 2002. So we'll, I'll be pursuing that. Um, so I think you know that we have a good chance, uh, as mean, good a chance would, as good a chance as anyone else to get that. That would be ideal because you know if we kind of look in our crystal ball for next year, um, with the school funding being what it is, um, and with the growth really not you know being particularly robust. It's not. It's not you know horrible, but it we only have so much mm -hmm. you know opportunity for growth. Um, that I think grants would be the best chance of us getting this done. I think if we were to have to um, do this 100% on the back of taxpayers, I'm not sure that it would pass. Um, yeah, I mean, the you can't because you can pursue the grants for the construction of it. That's what would be the that's what I would be doing. I'd be going yeah. after the grants to actually construct it. Okay, I think that's awesome. Did you guys have any questions? Of course, uh, you've seen this. Yeah, before. yeah, I've seen yeah. it before. Um, you said that the crosswalks were every 250 feet? No, no, the cross sections. Cross sections, oh, okay. Crosswalks are where they're needed, so for instance do, here. Do we know how many crosswalks? Uh, the off the top of my head, no. I'd have to yeah. actually go back and count them, and, but, and but they are delineated. Did he on. include that in the price, like, you know, the marking and the light, uh, not a lighting for the crosswalks, right? No, they haven't included okay. that. But as we go through the design process, yeah. that's all things that we can have them incorporate exactly yeah. obviously yeah. to the extent possible would want solar you know stuff right and also um has any thought been given uh to the um hellacious exit from the mbta parking lot um in this design at all yes so the design as far as the exit is concerned no but i believe that uh through the at the planning board level kevin you can correct me i thought we'd mentioned we'd mentioned that to them didn't we uh about I think this, so, yeah. yeah, we had, we had there was discussion at planning board level regarding uh -huh. the uh, access and egress from okay. the from the train station parking area. This is the crossing. This is the actual entrance, so yeah. you can see the sidewalks. It's and like Russian roulette there. It's absolutely yeah. insane yeah. when the trains come in. And I don't know how it is in <clears> other <throat> towns, but I just know it's particularly bad there. I'm surprised we don't have more accidents, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, the only other the only other station I can think of that is that close to the train track is Canton. Mm -hmm. You're in the center of Canton when you the train and the entrance to the it's like the track and the entrance to the train yeah. station like right there yeah you know um, so the, you know we'll we'll also have to get in touch with MBTA because obviously this sidewalk the intent is to go through there right away so we would have to get you know uh, discussions with them to get permission so who do we talk to with the MBTA about that. Uh, I am trying to find out who the contact is for that. I'm sure OCPC would have a line on it. I would think so. Yeah. 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 I know that uh, one thing that I believe uh, Highway has been informed that approval has been received from Keolis to do the paving. Because you know that along Main Street, oh, where, yes. where the crossing is, is what they didn't pave yeah. yes. because they, were, they needed to get permission. I guess they've received permission, so that's going to be on the list to get squared away, I think, this year in the spring. But I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay, that's great because people have been asking about that. Inquiring minds have been asking. So that's... This know. is great. I'm, I'm excited about this. Yeah, I think this is, this is I think, you know sort of like a very important foundational piece for us for anything else we really want to do. It's got to, I mean, when people give you feedback that they feel as though they're taking their life in their hands when they're leaving the MBTA and that it's creepy in certain parts of Main Street, that doesn't bode well for economic development. Um, so I think this is going to be great. And, you know, and I, I feel bad. A lot of times you see people, they look, fairly scared leaving that that station trying to Dixie out of there, you know, because mm -hmm. the sidewalks are in various states of disrepair, so. Well, as someone who lives up Elm Street and used to take the commuter rail, when I first moved to town, the first couple of weeks I tried to walk to that commuter rail station and I, Tough. I gave, gave up. that up very quickly because yeah. it was, you were taking your life in your hands. Yeah. You know, um, this would be 
an incredible upgrade. Yeah, it really would. That's good feedback too, Chris. I like it. Um, all right. Well, thank you. Um, any further discussions, comments? Okay. Um, thanks for that update. You're welcome. Um, yes. That that was considered a thirty percent. Twenty five. Twenty five. Sorry. Twenty five percent plan. So the next one is 70? I think they're going to shoot for 75 percent because that's usually how it works. You get 20. They might do the 50 and then the 75, you know. Um, so it's, you know, a good starting point. So they focus mostly on the high street end first, right? I don't know. What are you guys talking about? Maybe I'm jumping into a conversation. I think. No, no, no. The, the It's just oh. the design itself. So oh, the overall okay. design. Right. Okay. So you have, let's say, you know, zero to 100. Yeah. 25% of the design has been completed. And as you just move forward, you know, you might get to 50%, which just means there's more details, there's more information, there's more cost. Well, like what, what other things would they be adding in there for the... Well, um, the, the, know, they might be, they'll they be adding maybe more details for the... Uh, the the wheelchair access ramps or the lighting uh, or you know poles. So are those uh, lighting aside? Are any of the other um, things that they'd be adding in there likely to add substantially to the price tag that we'd be paying to have this done? I think the lighting is probably the one that may become the biggest. And then if you have the crosswalks where you have signal signalization there. Uh, signalization obviously costs a lot of money. Yeah. So it, you know, that's as we get into these discussions, we may have to have, let's say, uh, let's say a round table, if you will, of departments to say, okay, here's this 25% design. What would you like to see, and what what's the cost? You know, with the crosswalks, for instance, for example, let's say there's five crosswalks along this corridor. You know, do you want to signalize all of them, or do you just want to signalize two of them? You know, so those are all things that would yeah. be part of. So we have like. You know, um, highway, fire, you know, police, mm -hmm. planning. Mm -hmm. I don't know who else. Yeah. That, that probably would be town administrator, maybe, kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, like right. I said, I, I, you know, I brought this forward to the planning board and I uh, want to show economic development. And then I'll bring it before the select board. And so we'll start getting this ball rolling and get people to see what's, what's happening. Okay. That's great. Um, okay, with that, then we will move on to our Discuss Economic Development Committee draft outline. Um, did everybody see this? Yeah, so this is based on uh, this is based on the conversations that we've had with the commission, the committee. Yep. To see what the outlines are and how we'd like to sort of set things up to get things d done. So, did you want us to vote on this, or just take it under advisement for this evening, or did you I want would say, to have some key points? I would say, it, if since how you're just really looking at it, I would take it under advisement, and then at the next meeting. Uh, Edit any edits, any things okay. you want to add, any things you want to delete, and then uh, we could make a revision, and then you, know, you could vote on it. But we, you know, this just turns into sort of a guide for the Economic Development Committee as to what your goals are, what you'd like to see, what you'd like to do. I think this is helpful for us to mentally map <clears throat> the parameters of what we are responsible for, because this could turn into, like, you know, the eggplant that ate Chicago or something like it just could become bigger than you ever could imagine. Um, so it's good for us to be like, this is our mission. It isn't that, you know, that we wouldn't stretch at all beyond that, but it helps us keep a focus, I think. Yeah, Kim was good. Yeah. Uh, Kim prepared this. Uh, she did the outline and yep. uh, put all the information in based on, you know, minutes and the discussions the committees This had. is great, Kim. Thank you mm -hmm. for putting it together. I really appreciate Absolutely. it. Um, okay, so um, we'll review it and get back to you. And um, and do we want to answer these questions? Are we answering these questions, or that's up to you? If you want, if you okay. want, if you want to have provide the answer. I mean, you know, this could become sort of your uh, handbook, if you will. You okay. Know? I mean, it seems like most of the questions have been, but maybe um, the difference between EDC and business network. So we can talk about that at our next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that I am in a good place to answer that question. 
Um, so, okay, great. All right, good. Thank you, Tony, and thank you, Kim. Mm -hmm. All right, um, so that brings us to One Stop Grant Program Awards Update. Uh, so I just want to give the committee an update. Um, you're probably all aware, but uh, we have the mat right now we have the master plan and the pedestrian improvements. You've seen the, what's going on with the pedestrian improvements. Uh, the master plan, uh, Old Colony Planning Council is who I've been working with. They've been doing department head interviews. Um, They've come to the planning board. There's a uh, master plan steering committee that's comprised of two members of the planning board, a member of the conservation commission, and two members of the public. So they've uh, come in and met at the planning board. Uh, there's going to be a summit, if you will, or the second public hearing. Well, it's, a, it's kind of like, more like a summit at Camp Kiwani on the 20, I believe it's the 29th of February. Um, mm -hmm. So to have public outreach uh, and discussions with the committee members, the public, planning board, uh, I'll be posting that, so I'll be informing the planning board next what Monday. The, what's the date on that? Uh, February the 29th. Oh, okay. I can't do that. Um, okay. And uh, so we continue working forward, uh, moving forward on the master plan, which has to be completed by the end of June 2024 is when the funding runs out. Uh, and I believe that they are on target at this point to do so. Good, correct. That's great. Because it was a little precarious there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a tight schedule. Uh, I mean, you know, the you know, the grant that I received through the one stop is, you know, end of it's the end of June twenty twenty four. I know there was a technical assistance grant and then there was monies provided through town meeting. Uh, the technical assistance grant, I didn't have anything, it wasn't involved in that, so I'm not sure what this deadline for that, that is, but their target date is the end of June 2024. And again, as far as the pedestrian improvements, that's where we're at with that. Um, so then that brings us to the 2025, 2025 one-stop grant program expression of interest update. Um, my mistake on the agenda, that should be FY 2024. So we have uh, three grants going at this particular point in time. Uh, Zero West Washington Street, which is a property adjacent to the water department. Uh, we have a firm that was, uh, they, they're called House Doctors. It's, so it's a certified engineering firm through the Commonwealth. Uh, the company is VHB. Uh, they are going to be beginning work out there, uh, establishing the wetland line, surveying the property, and they'll be creating preliminary plans to determine what could be achieved on that property whether it's a single business or a business park. And again, that is the property that the town owns that Correct. is part of the industrial park. It's adjacent to the yeah. industrial park. Yeah, yep. and next to the water department and the industrial park. Correct. Okay. So that is in the very beginning stages, but that's kicked off. Uh, Hawks Ave, we just had an on-site uh, yesterday with um, members of Redantis who are going to be doing the brownfield assessment. And so we did a walk uh, near the buildings and in the wooded area. So they, uh, that's going to be getting soon. And then the starter home district, we also have a uh, firm for that. Again, early stages, but they'll be beginning shortly. And what they'll do is they're going to look at the town, town wide and see if there's any area in town where a starter home district might be possible. And the starter home district is talking about homes that are about that are 1,850 square feet. Uh, some of them would be affordable. Some would be market rate. Uh, but it's think of it as uh, sort of like the after World War II, a small lot, small start, a nice yep. small home to try and um, make single family home ownership available to folks without having to pay really exorbitant prices. Now um, um, you're saying some would be affordable. Um, the 
This wouldn't be the town developing this. This would no. be a private developer Correct. coming in. Okay. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Um, and on the Hawks Avenue. I mean, uh, the, I'm uh, sorry. Oh, the town yeah. could, if they chose to, they could do that. But they it, could, but, but I think most, what we keep running into is there's nobody driving that bus right now. Right. Um, the, so, yeah. yeah. It, the town could do it, but more than likely this would be a private sector yep. driven type of project. Yeah, we don't have anybody that we have. The housing authority who is taking care of the housing that we currently have that's uh, for seniors and, and affordable uh, but we don't have and you know like a, a group who's responsible for creating any new affordable housing so it likely will end up being a private um, party on the Hawks Avenue what um, what is the process that they're going to go through like how many holes are they going to drill or like what area are they looking at I'm just curious like what's the process there so what they're going to do is they're going to uh, they're going to take a visual inspection they're going to bring in a truck that's going to have put some borings in the ground okay and then yep. they'll take samples of soil mm -hmm. they'll take a look at and this is all the majority of this work is going to be within that wooded area to see what, if anything, had... Oh, okay. So, all right. That, I'm glad you said okay. that because um, I walk there frequently with my dog um, in the wooded area. Um, and so I, when I was thinking about it, I was thinking it was sort of the field off to the left there. No. But it's, so it's really off to the right. Um, near, like, uh, getting right up to the tower there, right? Correct. Okay. So if you All could right. picture between the back of those buildings, the area between the back of the buildings and where the cell tower is... Yep. That wooded area. Okay. That's when the I'm going to say ninety percent of the exploration is going to be okay. done. Okay. They will do some looking around the buildings, but we know that there's we, there's reports that show what's taken place historically, uh, cleanup wise. Yes. Yes. But there really isn't anything between the, those buildings and headed towards that cell tower. Now there was, an, I, as far as I know, um, I don't believe there was ever anything done under the buildings, right? Uh, I'm not sure how they would have done it, but I, 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 my understanding was they never really did an exhaustive search under the buildings. I'd have to go look at the reports. I know when we were out there yesterday, we saw in one of the buildings, someone had cored through the uh, concrete floor. That would make me feel better. So okay. I would, I, looking at, at what we saw out there, I think that someone had done testing, okay. through, right. had cored through the floor. And, and tested beneath it. That's so awesome because then check. we'll have a comprehensive of the whole property that we own. Right, right. Yeah. And they'll check all the historical documents. So what's the turnaround them. time for them to, you know, um, I'm not going to like, you know, hold you to it. I'm just curious. Are we talking a couple months or? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Because uh, they're hoping to start within the next few weeks to get out there. Uh, okay. You know, we were walking around so they could see where could they bring in a boring truck and as, uh, as you're well aware, there's an easement, which is very wide, yes, and then yeah. there's a couple of offshoots that are very wide, so they can get in. They're also going to take a look at the septic, the leaching area where the leaching field is. Yep. There's actually some monitoring. What's the monitoring well out there? So they'll they'll test all that. So awesome. that so that wooded area that the deed that the town physically owns is what will be examined. Now, how far back are they are they going to go back to where those trees are all planted? The uh, there, it almost looks like a quasi Christmas tree farm or something. I don't know if somebody intentionally planted them, but there's rows and rows of trees that look exactly they, they look like Christmas trees. Mm -hmm. They're off there to, they're like between the tower and the tracks in the woods there. Mm -hmm. um, if you go along the um, the power lines um, they're, they're like kind of to the right of the power lines, between the power lines and the, and the train track. I, are we go, how, like how far are we going? I think what, well, I where whatever the town owns is where they'll be. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure we own up to up there. Yeah. There was a. Uh, I believe that the cell tower is the the gate for the cell tower. I think is about 50 feet off the property line when you get to that sort of other side. Yep. And then it sort of squares off. So, you know, they're going to look at that whole area where they can get to, and, yep. uh, and they'll and they'll test, and you know, hopefully it all comes up roses and then we can pursue getting some of those restrictions lifted which would then <coughs> excuse me allow the town to utilize all the property and decide what they want to do 
Yeah, that would give um, us a lot more options. Yeah, I, 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 there's a, the way that that lot is configured now, um, Hubble owns a 40 foot strip along town land. Yep. And what would be nice is if we could either speak with Hubble and enter into some kind of agreement where they donate that or the, the town could buy that 40 foot right away. And at the end of it, they would still have 40 feet for their property or if they sell it. Yep. But then it would allow Hanson to lengthen Hawks Ave, go completely across that frontage and allow us to develop that property into something, whether it's a commercial industrial or if the, the restrictions are lifted, something else. Uh, you know, and maybe split the property up where we could keep the buildings and then the remaining property could be used for something else. So we yep. can keep the buildings for storage or whatever. You know? Well, and we've had, um, I think we had the state police ask, uh, ask us about a training facility for dogs or something. And then we had, um, you know, um, wildlife fisheries approach us. I think once we get our act together and we get a clean bill of health, sky's the limit. Yeah, I, I, uh, this will now bring me to, I've filed expressions of interest under the 2025, um, under the 2025 one-stop program. And I filed a total of six. And I've so you received feedback on, on all of them. And I have received feedback on all six. Five the, met the criteria and the sixth, uh, they they really weren't they really weren't buying it. Uh, and let me just so I filed uh, six expressions of interest. I filed one was for High Street, the building on High Street, the vacant building on High Street, two twenty eight. Okay. Yeah. Um, the front another, part. Correct. Okay. Another one was for uh, Main Street sidewalk from the High Street to Route uh, fifty eight. Uh, a third is for uh, looking at creating a 40R overlay and like over our existing flexible overlay. It just adds yep. the affordable component, any affordable unit you create, town um, gets money. Um, and the, the next one was for the last lot in the industrial park at the end of the cul-de-sac that the town owns. Oh, the, the one that may or may not have things dumped in it? Uh, oh, I don't know about that. It's, it's, like, it's, it's, it's not the acres. zero West Washington. It's the one <clears throat> up near the water stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We're talking about the same one. Okay. Um, and then the next one is Hawks Ave as an underutilized building. So looking at getting grant funding to basically turn those buildings from just empty shells into something, bringing them back. Yeah. <laughs> so you can yeah. actually use them. And then the last one I was uh, shooting for was... Uh, um, a generator for the library a senior center but it doesn't fit any of their criteria so they're like yeah no nice try so what I'm going to do with that one is actually I'm going to take a look at our municipal vulnerability plan yes and there's municipal vulnerability grants yes I've I'll be applying for two already but I'm going to take a look at our MVP and see if maybe the generator might be we might be able to pursue a grant under that I love it so it seems compatible uh, with that. Yeah, you would think so. And I, I, I want to say that as I, I've, got, I've read through the MVP a couple of times, I want to say that it's on the list. And so if it's on the list, I think we have uh, the ability to apply for grants for it. So I might chase that grant and see if we can get it through that. Um, the last grant opportunity was we received a letter uh, yesterday from Mass Housing uh, that they're going to give us a grant for the Phillips Street property that's owned by the town of Hanson and under the Hanson Housing Authority. It's a vacant piece of property right now yep. across from Dakota Farms. So they didn't give us an amount, but they are going to give us a grant to take a look at that property. Okay, yeah, they, they didn't give us an amount. Right. Yeah. So they, what would they would, would do is... How much is, should they typically... I believe that they were, uh, they were offering up to 100000 Okay. But uh, so they'll be getting in touch with me in the next couple of days. So at least they'll be providing funding that we could hire a consultant to take a look at the resource areas, the property, the soils, what's there, what can we get out of it. Yep. We may find we can't get anything out of it, or we may find, yeah, you can get something out of it. 
Now you, yeah. I don't know, is it is that wet? A lot of wetlands in there, or there are wetlands if you look at the GIS. Yeah. And but to know what physically is on the ground, you actually have to do the work. So this is what this grant would allow us to take a look at, similar to the Zero West Washington Street. Yeah, because when I drove by there to the untrained eye, I thought, oh, maybe that's why nobody's ever developed it. It looks a little, a little wet in there. Yeah, uh, there is yeah. wetland. There is yeah. wetland. But, you know, there, until we actually physically put it on a plan, we don't know what we have. Yeah, okay, great. That's awesome. Did anybody have any questions for um, Mr. DeVries? Okay. Um, one question yeah. on the Hawks Ave. <clears throat> is the ability to get the one-stop grant dependent on this study that's being done on the property, or is that separate, unrelated? It, it's it's separate. I know that you know that might be a question, and I, that's why I put it in the EOI. Yeah. Um, the other thing too is it'll be competing with High Street because it's, it falls under the same grant. Um, but one thing we sort of have. Or do know is that there was testing and where the buildings are themselves we know that there's historical documentation shows that what was done as far as we'll call it the cleanup yeah so you know if those those buildings will say have a the buildings themselves or the area around them immediate around them have a clean bill of health then you know I think that doesn't well doesn't and they did us. say that um, they did say that um, Western Sampson said that they, based on the usage of the build, historical usage of the building, that they were able to hypothesize what materials would have potentially been um, dumped there as contaminants, and then they, from that, could extrapolate how it might flow. So that's what they tested around the building. That isn't to say that they weren't dumping barrels of stuff in the woods. That right. That's the whole. Know. That's the whole thing. I yeah. mean, the one thing this grant with Hawks Ave does is it's, it's an insurance policy for the town to be sure that the woods out there are just that woods. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> versus finding out you've entered into an agreement with someone who says, "Hey, we'll give you uh, ten million dollars for the property," and then you find out that you have a fireworks situation, yeah. and yeah. and you go, oh, "Great, there's money that we just lost yeah. because we didn't do due diligence." I feel hopeful about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you know it's again it's just an insurance policy. So now we know for sure, and it's grant money. It's not it's not the, it's not the citizens of Hanson funding this examination through town meeting money. But we do want to uh, you know. Uh, we want to put those buildings to use, it right. specifically to some use where we might derive some income from right. them. Right, which is why I'm chasing yeah. the what's under the call the underutilized, and um, so I'm going to pursue the grant to try and get some money to get those buildings back into shape and, yep. up, and up the code. And so I've I've spoke with Lisa and I'm working with uh, Charlie Baker uh, because he's had some estimates uh, and said give me now some new estimates so at least we can use that as part of the grant application. Okay, that's awesome. Um, all right, great. Um, okay, and then um, outline 2024 goals of the Economic um, Development Committee. That pretty much, is, uh, that's that's pretty much the same as the uh, the draft outline. Okay. So uh, we can go, we can just skip that. Okay, and then um, the draft annual report review. Um, yeah, I, I didn't hear back from anyone, so it I looked did. looked fine. I, to me. I submitted. I yeah. submitted it. Um, yep. You know, I don't know. I, I don't recall, or don't know if the economic development committee has ever done an annual report. But I figured, why not? We definitely <laughs> should do one. I don't. I thought we should whether too. We did or not, but um, but I think you know every opportunity to just remind people that we we exist right. um, and we're actually doing stuff is, I think, beneficial. So you know, it just. It, it, it was you know, just a couple of pages to uh, Did, do we have an update on <clears throat> the funds that we have in our account? That's a really great yeah. question. Um, I do have access to that, so I yep. can find out yep. what, what's left in the yeah, account. And, and, that, and if there's any specific parameters around what it can be used for, what that money can be used for. Um, that was going to be, I suppose, another question is we have some funds in an account for Economic Development Committee. I did not know if, let's say, in October or whatever, if this committee is interested in just... I'll get you the uh, yeah. the account and how uh, the amount in the account, so you'll know, and then 
you might want to, I don't know if you want to consider trying to get a small budget. I do think we want to yeah. because we want to start working with exactly. the Chambers of Commerce and we're going to need some money. Um, I'm sure that we're going to need to put together brochures or, you know, some kind of marketing plan. I don't know, but I know it's not going to be free, whatever we need to do um, if we're trying to shop ourselves out there. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I think that, um, that, that that would be a good idea. And also, um, kind of simpatico to this, I, I don't know, I'd be curious what you guys think about this, but I do think it falls under our purview. Um, I had a conversation with Ann Donner, who was working with us on our strategic plan last week. Um, Lisa Green and I had a conversation. I believe it was last week. I don't know. The dates start to blur. And um, we were going over sort of like progress on the different strategic planning goals. And she was actually kind of blown away on a lot of the stuff that our this committee's done and, you know, all kinds of stuff, mostly due to you and, and um, Lisa Tony. Um, and... We started talking about Main Street, and we started talking about 1057, and I can speak about this openly now because it is a matter of public record. Um, there's uh, quite a bit of um, enforcement action that the town is taking with respect to 1057 Main Street, um, particularly along the lines of fire safety code and building code issues. So a little bit of health, board of health, but mostly it's building and fire. Um, and it's involved the state and it's involved um, local officials. We've gone to court. Um, we've, um, and we continue to go to court and follow up with inspections. And the property has been put up for sale. Mm -hmm. And um, it, in fact, I think it's the second, it's another real estate agent that uh, just listed the property now. One of the things uh, Ms. Donner suggested was that we think about if we want to send a message to prospective buyers that the town really wants to work with whomever it is who might purchase that property, um, she suggested that we, we entertain um, whether or not we might want to almost develop a, a, a marketing similar to what we're doing for Zero Washington Street, which is like, here's within the confines of the regulations that we have, here's the possible uses. She said she's even seen towns um, permit, you know, get conservation permits, ZBA planning, et cetera, et cetera, for certain uses. And it helps to make that property more marketable, not to help the real estate agent. I, have no, I don't know that person from a hole in the wall, but to make it so that the town is more likely to have an outcome on that property that we want. Um, and that's going to benefit us financially. Um, I thought it was an amazing little idea. Um, I hadn't even thought about it. I didn't know if Lisa had had a chance to mention it to you or not. Uh, not yet. Okay. I mean, I think it was like last Thursday we spoke. So, um, so I told her to to talk to you because that may be something. You know, again, I don't know where he is in the sale of it. I tend to think maybe not far along since he just changed um, brokers. Mm -hmm. um, but what do you guys think about that? That's great. I mean, yeah. I, I feel like we've got, that's such a critical yeah. piece of property in town, and it's so critical. It's like a linchpin to that whole Main Street, mm -hmm. that if there's anything we can do to effectuate a positive change there um, and encourage the right kind of development there, I, I would love to be part of that. I don't, you know, and she didn't make it sound like it would be super costly. She said it's mostly just conceptual stuff that you'd be coming up with. Yeah. Um, and I think she said if we pressed her, she could tell us. She had a name for it, like Mars or MAPS, or there was some acronym that she used. I don't okay. know what it was, but she said um, that this is done all the time and that she's seen it done. She lives in Newton. It's been done there, you know, for properties. But she said a lot of times, like Brockton, like those types of places where you might have an abandoned building and you really want to see it go to good use. So anyway, I just thought I'd mention it to you. No action to be taken, but just maybe talk to Lisa about it and okay. um, see about that. Um, okay. Um, March, our next meeting. Um, when would people like to meet?
I personally would like to wait until after the 16th of March uh, because I have um, a very large fundraiser that is going to take up most of my life for the next couple of weeks in March. Um, so would the 20th of March work for people? Sure. Would that work for you, yeah. Tony? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 5.30. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does 5.30 still work for you guys? Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. So we'll plan on March 20th. I did um, want to ask the committee. I had um, a call from, I'm not going to say her last name correctly, but oh, Candace Wright, who owns Heidi's. Oh, okay. Um, she would like to come to a future meeting and, and then meet the committee. Have her come to our March so 20th. Right yeah, out. and also tell her to get herself involved with the Hansen Business Network. We're meeting next um, Wednesday. Um, tell her to get on the Hansen Business Network Facebook page, okay. and she can network the hell out of that. Um, if yes. I can add to that, yeah. Peter Foreman from yeah. the South Shore Chamber of Commerce had reached out to me this week. We would love to have him. Regarding yeah. grant opportunities. And he had asked about the business. Uh, business network? Yes. You can put him in touch with me. And he said yeah. he was going to reach out to you. Okay. Regarding, because he says there's yeah. potential grant opportunities. And that was the next thing. Yeah, I'd like to, because uh, I told him, he says, yeah, I know we spoke about us coming down there. I said, yeah, I still want to get you in for like the March meeting. And he says, yeah, let me know. So if the committee is uh, interested I'll see if I can set him up to come in in the March meeting because he may be able to bring an entourage of folks to sort of have ideas and expertise and, you know, give us a hand as to, okay, here's what you should do, don't do this. You know. Yeah, I'd like to devote the major like most of the meeting to that. Oh, absolutely. You know, and we'll just like, um, unless there's anything really, really pressing, I think like this is where the rubber meets the road. We mm -hmm. really, we need somebody to help us understand like, you know, what can we do? What do you suggest? How do we move this? Right, and I think that, you know, with them helping, it might also at that point give you an idea of, okay, if we need a budget, how big of a budget do you want mm -hmm. to ask me that you might yeah. need? Right? Yes, definitely. Right. So. Are you guys in agreement? Yeah, agree. okay, yeah. that's exciting. Mm -hmm. um, that's exciting. I love it. Um, okay, um, anything else? No. No? Okay. No. Then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay, great. Thanks, you guys, for Aye. organizing us and getting this all together. We appreciate it.